All right, so in this video, we're going to just do a basic run through of some of the, the classes found in mollusks. Uh, we're going to deal with the simpler classes, and we'll deal with gastropods also, which are kind of one of the biggest classes in the animal kingdom, actually. And so we will start with looking at the simplest, Cato foveata. Uh, there are only 120 species of these out of 90,000 total mollusk species, so there's a relatively small species. Um, these are worm-like marine mollusks. Um, they burrow, they orient their terminal end, which means like if, if, the, if what you see is the tail, this would be like their, or their head, this would be like the tail. It's not really a tail, but you get the idea. Um, they orient their terminal end toward the interest. We'll see entrance. We'll see several mollusks that do this. They kind of put their heads in the sand and that's how they eat. It's weird. Um, these, um, are significant because they share common characteristics with the most recent common ancestor between worms and mollusks. So this is kind of like a, I hesitate to say like a, a transitional kind of thing because they're not, but the ancestor of Cotophobieta and worms is that transitional thing. So if you think about how a cladogram is organized, this is like the current thing, but the ancestral part would be a link with worms and this. So uh, selenogastres, which means tube stomach, well, there's 250 species, very similar to Cotophobieta, um, no radula, no gills, and so they're mostly like filter type feeders, but they also feed on cnidarians, so they can be predatory as well. Very simple species, not a whole lot to talk about. Monoplacophora, and so this is one we're going to see where this is more like what we think of a true mollusk in that they have a shell. Now, they do have um, just a very simple shell, pretty small, and so monoplacophora means one plate, and so they have a single shell. The bottom is uh, soft, or the, the ventral surface is soft. Uh, they were thought to be extinct, and they were rediscovered in the 1950s, which is pretty fascinating. Only 25 species found, and they have what are called serially repeating organs, and so you see this a lot in the animal kingdom where there are more than one set of organs and this is just for redundancy. So if something breaks down, then there's something there. Like you see here, several nephridium, several gills and so forth. Um, they have that again, that small rounded shell. They have, um, like I said, several repeating organs and they're really simple kinds of organisms. Polyplacophora on the other hand, have multiple plates and usually have between six and eight plates on their back, even though it looks like that one has, well, that one has eight, I think, unless I'm just not counting correctly. Um, so they, and they kind of almost resemble like an isopod, like a roly-poly, uh, and they actually can roll up in a ball in order to protect themselves. There's around two or around a thousand species of polyplacophora, and they are, sometimes they're called chitons. Um, they feed just by scraping algae off the surface of rocks and that sort of thing. So yeah, polyplacophora. Scaphopoda. These are called boat footed. Um, I'm not sure where the boat foot comes in. Um, sometimes you'll see them called tusk shells because of the, the shape. They look like tusk shells. One of the, their kind of interesting thing is they're a benthic organism. They live on the bottom of the ocean, and they live in the deep parts of the ocean, like 6,000 meters deep. That's um, that's on down there. Uh, that's several miles below the surface. Only around 900 species of Scaphopoda, which is fascinating to think that there's 900 species that have been identified of something that lives thousands of meters below the surface. Um, they use their foot to burrow into the sediment, as you can kind of see here, and they keep their terminal end up in the water to breathe and uh, get rid of other things that are going on, and they just filter feed down there in the mud. Gastropods. So these are the biggest biggest class of mollusks. There's 70,000 species of gastropods. These are like snails and slugs. Um, typically, they have a shell, but not always. Like Slugs don't have a shell, or most slugs don't. Um, but they're noted for their slow movement, and this has to do with the weight of their shell. Um, their shell is a univalve shell, which means it's just one piece, and uh, the shell is typically spiraled. You can see here are these spiral shells, 
And at the apex of the shell, which is the center part, is the oldest portion, and it spirals out toward the newest portion, which makes room for the new mollusk. So this is like conches and things like that. Um, these can be marine or, or aquatic, and they can also be terrestrial. And so a couple of things that make them interesting. Torsion is this idea that over the course of their development, whereas they'll have their mouth on one end, the anus on the other, like you would expect a normal digestive system to be. But as the shell twists, the digestive system is going to kind of twist around with it to orient the anus over the top of the mouth so that the, the uh, anus or the ma uh, mantle cavity is now over the top of the mouth. So that's kind of strange. So that they, um, yeah, it's kind of an odd situation there. Um, but that's, that's what happens with uh, snails and slugs. And just again, again this idea of coiling, uh, the winding of that shell, um, whereas the oldest portion is down here at the apex and the newest out here uh, towards the end. Uh, as far as feeding is concerned, they have all sorts of adaptations of the radula that allow them to feed. There are some that are predatory. There are some that are like herbivorous, like this here snail. So they're going to be all over the place as far as as far as their feeding, and they just use adaptations of that radula to do that.